All right, so it was suggested that this was flooded. Trail closed ahead, so it might well be. For, yeah, so 1.5 miles ahead. So um, I'm not sure how far 1.5 miles is, um, but I'm going to go check it out. Uh, uh, yeah, still listening to the podcast that wasn't. Well, I think it might be a different episode, but it's called the FinTech Mosh Pit. And uh, I'm just, uh, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to actually hear it, but um, I'm just going to leave it on. Uh, you know, I usually do a lot of talking. I'm going to do a lot of listening <laughs> this time. Listening and watching for potholes. But yeah, this is this this is what I was thinking when I told my friends that this was not flooded. Uh, um, I wonder if down there on those trails is actually where the flooding is and up here is fine. Um, I know, I'm not following my rule that I was going to shut up, so. <laughs> I'm shutting up. Oh, okay, I'm not shutting up. Maybe I will after, uh, I'll shut up until after I get past. There's a dog up here. And then how do you get creatively get money and bonding capacity into Port Authority so that the local Port Authority can be an engine for economic growth and development for the local community? This can't all be coming out of Washington. So, you know, you've you got to do both. But we need total um, So I got, I, I, sh I don't have it with me. So, you know, product placement sort of thing. And they're not sponsored or anything. But uh, at Costco, I got this new hydration stuff, you know, Gatorade sort of thing. I think it's got B vitamins in it. Uh, I feel great. Um, so I've also eaten these kids' Cliff Bars. The Cliff Bars at Costco, all the adult ones have chocolate. Um, I can't have chocolate. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, but when the, the kids' ones have, like, 12 out of the 36 don't have chocolate. Wendy said she'd eat the others. So, um, yeah, I mean, I ate those too, so maybe that's part of why I feel good. Um, but, uh, it was also nice. I mean, it was cloudy earlier, but it's, it's nice. I mean, there's still some clouds on the outside, but this is a nice day. Nick was supposed to come out with me today, but, uh, he's sick, so, uh, if you're watching Nick, feel better. I swear I'm gonna shut up. I want to shut up. I want to listen. That it's just. Uh, I would. I shut up for when I wasn't on camera. I was listening when I wasn't on camera. I'm not that I'm on mic. I guess I'm not really on the camera. I believe it was 82 metal. Yeah! That's not what I think when I look at the other wall. It's 80, 80 metal. Sure. Hopefully you see the irony in new metal and 80s and don't go together. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so let's get back. Before we get back, right? Education. We're looking at what's going on. 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 I forgot to turn on Strava again. I think this is a transitional problem, honestly. I, mean, I think this is great to see the kind of activity going on. That's the way to find fun, to make sure we've got the right of capital support in different uh, regions. But I think the reality is, once you see a couple big exits, that's what really creates the staying power, what created Silicon Valley in the first place. And I think that's what will make it sustainable in places like the Rush Belt or in the Southeast, is having uh, experienced founders who have significant capital that's happened, and now they become mentors to be able to support additional entrepreneurial activity. And I think that's how you, you change the uh, It's getting colder now, 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 now that I'm in the... Uh, uh, in the uh, shade, which is fine because when I started the ride, it was uh, cloudy and I was kind of thinking it was going to be cold. So, I can, no gloves, which I can put on, I got them. So, Oh, 440. Well, yeah, I guess I've been on the out, been on for an hour. Makes sense, I guess. I got started a little late. I'll probably ate lunch a little later than we usually do, too. 
Went to a party. It's not, it's actually a party for kids, but it's our good friends, Bob and Jenny, their kids' birthday party. Uh, oh, went down there. I need to talk to Bob about some stuff anyway. Which we did a little bit, not as much as uh, would be good, but of course he's busy doing, you know, he's got other people to talk to while he's there. And the stuff I need to talk to him about it is not pressing at all. It's actually my bike truck down to the Gulf. So, uh, that's who knows how long that'll be. I tend to, uh, not be good at long term goals. Short term goal goals, amazing at those. And I tend to not be particularly good at long term goals. So, uh, too easily distracted. Or three years from now, it's, it's, it's dead. I think it's part of this is longevity. How can you build a sustainable business beyond just two years or five years? I think that's really hard to see the big impact of changing the And I think if you look at the other places outside of and I mean, like, what is long term? I mean, you know, like I went through law school, but the thing about that is I broke it down, you know, like each class is, or even like each test is its own little mini goal. I think that's one reason why I did well in school. Because, you know, quizzes, test papers, those are the goals. It's not, I, I didn't see it as like this thing. So, yeah, so like this is where I was wanting to go when I was telling my friends we were going to ride. And then uh, you can see that it's pretty, it's pretty close over there, but um, it's actually not flooded here. So um, there's a bridge. Hey, there's some birds. Uh, there's a, a bridge over there, which it might be just a little too overgrown to see, but that I would have gone over, gone across. I guess it's right over there, actually. I think different point the other way. Um, so yeah, we could have gotten there easily. And that's Fort Snelling up there. I'm not sure I've been down here since I've been taking video. Uh, there's a hill over there. It's very steep. You can get a better view of the fort. And yeah, look at all those trees. It is quite flooded, but I am suspicious that this was always okay up here. Don't know, but in any case, it's okay now. So, um, and that's fine. They didn't come, it wasn't that they didn't come because of the flooding, or the potential for flooding. They didn't come for other reasons. Paul had to go look at a guitar. Not sure what Jesse had to, had to do. I don't really know Jesse. Um, Paul and John know him. Uh, I don't think I've ever met Jesse. Just to, it's not a, like I don't really know him. I don't, I don't think I've ever met him. That first day, uh, I can't remember if, if, I, if John was on those very first videos or not, or if I wasn't sure what I was doing yet. Uh, I think maybe I didn't have a SD card at all. Um, Anyway, maybe I'll finally shut up now.
four years of additional duplicate. Seven last time, the only way it was both in six months. Well, alert, I think it's last time. But in this case, is it is it dead and it doesn't know what or what today's needs are in education for uh, somebody in the station? Uh, my answer is no. In the station, we just have to I also think it's, it's time box in the, the generation that are still that still make hiring decisions and still evaluating employees in the company. It is still important in a lot of cases. I think as that, that generational shift happens in the workplace, I think it becomes more and more de as a thing. And it's more about what skills we're learning. On the macro, I can't agree with you, but in the specific experience we had over the last year launching our own program, you know, Dr. Kathy Stock over there at Bank of America, I mean, she basically, in her own division, runs a Fortune 100 company as well, right? And she said on this very podcast, I think two of her direct reports don't have a college degree. Yep, I remember that. I mean, and so not only is, is that change there, and, and there's a great story after that where Tasha and Dean and her about being hired over there, and they went and, and they said, we're having trouble. They're, they're not expecting because I don't have a degree. degree. Tasha and Dean sent them the podcast and Kathy talking about it. And they changed their mind, not only they had a hiring network, but they're also shifting thoughts around. So it's not just like a generational shift. It has to be something like, this is, a, this is where the competitive global battle is being waged for talent. And there's just not enough of this kind of talent out there. They have to make that change before, you know, the millennials all take over everything and they won't have to survive. I think the, the pace of change is so fast now, too, that there, there's hell no self-selection happening because the, the people who go through alternative uh, ways of learning, whether it's self-guided or whether it's through coding boot camps or through you know, something that's non-traditional secondary education or higher education, um, what you'll start to see in the workplace as those people enter the workplace is that they, they become more competitive. And I think that, to some degree, promotes the, the outcome that, that you guys are talking about, which is, yeah, it becomes uh, less important. But I can tell you from my, my own personal experiences, you know, I was at Bank of America in 2009, uh, 2008, 2009, and one of the things that I was coached on was that, oh, if you want to get to a certain level, you have to have an MBA. And I do think that that, that is changing a brand of the topic, like the example you gave, that uh, we're people don't necessarily agree but I'll tell you this, if you look at it in, the, in, the, in the financial services practice that I'm at, or our CTO doesn't have a college degree. And I, th- and I actually think there is some bit of those guys that don't go get a college degree that learn it through on the job, studying themselves. I think sometimes also pissing set themselves up for greater success because they know they've got to go back and work harder and they're willing to do the work that sometimes uh, some folks have that shingle from some university thinks that they don't have to. It's not that happening. Yeah, so maybe my flaw was in, in tying it back to generational as opposed to typical, right? But to your point, Chris, like as the people get into leadership roles and decision-making roles that have taken a different path, they're naturally more open to candidates that have also taken a different path and it just sort of cycles themselves, right? Right. Whereas traditionally, people that have come through that flow, oh, you have to have a degree to be into this role, maybe they've got a more structured view of that mindset. But as those people are sort of shifting over with other getting opportunities, that opens the doors more of that. I think the one thing that has to be said whenever we have conversations like this, though, is that the, a four-year degree around uh, secondary education, higher education, has been beyond vocation. So, I, and, you know, I think it's tough because we all get so focused on just the job part, but I, I do think it's worth saying. Maybe another podcast does help. Maybe another podcast should shut up your show and learn to come. I think we start with the car. So, what, the Carolina FinTech Hub has recently been working to create a partnership with a West Coast uh, organization called Lambda School. And Lambda School is, uh, is really kind of taking a bit of a different approach to this, where we have been um, more targeted uh, virtual based training. And uh, if you're accepting the program, uh, sometimes folks are in need of upper mobility solutions, other times people have great aptitude. And they're training in very specific tech based jobs that are getting pretty good reviews and they're raising a lot of money. Um, is that, is that kind of one of the flavors of the model of the future? I think it absolutely is. I think the, it goes back to the missile incentive that I was mentioning earlier. In the case of Lambda School, through the, the mode that they use the paper, it's called an co sharing agreement. And it fundamentally aligns the outcome of the student with the the success of the school. And so, absolutely, I think what they're doing right now with Lambda School is very narrow. It's looking at a a much more technology based education, 30 week program, and uh, the the financial commitment of students is is limited. And again, it's tied to their their being successful with it. But I think it's a, to to think that Lambda School is only for education, I think we're just seeing it get started. I think the Lambda School for X in the future is Lambda School. So, I don't, I think think you're going to see it expanded to other areas. So, what about you guys all in various forms of fashion know about the Carolina FinTech Housing Program, uh, the workforce initiative that we're doing? So, this came out of a call from one of our anchor sponsors, uh, CEOs, Brian Moynihan, who over a year ago said upward mobility, economic mobility, all of our responsibilities, especially in the private sector. And for those of you who aren't from this region, uh, you know, there was a Harvard study done um, that made us uh, uh, rank Charlotte 50 out of 50. Yeah, that's, right. that's where the one place we don't want to be number one. Right. So, um, but yeah, so, well, well we, you do in that case. Well, but, you, but, but, but we were ranked, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we were the opposite. 50 out of 50 is we the worst. So that, that call to action really made us, among, among many others, look, what can we do? So we've designed for almost a whole year this program that's launching in March that takes um, uh, underserved minorities, women, anyone in need of upward mobility, particularly go out and look for them who don't have the four year degrees, the traditional hard skills or, or references, but have the aptitude to do well in a FinTech related field. And then we rigorously assess them. If they're accepted, they enter our six month training program, but it's not training program. It's the first day of their job. And all they have to do is show up, do well, um, work hard, and if they do, and they pass their assessment throughout it, they not only keep that job, then they move up in, in, in their career in technology and fintech, working for the banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, bb and Ally, and EY, and others who have taken and given the Carolina FinTech Company's job. Is that a model for the future? And is that something where doing you know well for your partners and giving them the new market talent they need while doing good for the community is the angle we're looking for in an ultimate solution? Yeah, my internet is absolutely yes. Um, I think we can give a shout out to Red Ventures and the hire program they helped pioneer. Because that was really a model for them. They would take kids that are right and have the attitude but wouldn't have been on a track before your college degree and have a solution for them and be able to train them in a way where they can go out and post high school get a job earning fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year versus spending four years in, in college. And the idea too that if you have a choice at the end of hiring a really bright coder with four years of great experience or a recent college grad for four year program that has zero experience, who do you hire? That's a no brainer decision, right? Um, so I think that model of private industry is the one driving the need is absolutely the model to follow. I, I think I agree with all that and I think that's sort of one of the positive outcomes of the talent competition, right? Is that if you take it from your sort of the, the hiring company side, everyone's trying to find talent, everyone's trying to find people that will work hard and then not just sort of know also play a contributing role. Those are the people that will play a very contributing role, right? Because at some level they just appreciate the opportunity to be given that chance. So they tend to,
speaking for me specifically, I would not go to college. Why? But, well, I think for in my particular case, I was fortunate in that when I was young, I had parents who were forward thinking and knew that computers were going to be the important thing, and I learned. I started learning how to code when I was seven. That was an unusual thing back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if anyone doubted my nerdiness, I'm just... I can talk, wait, 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 wait. All these pictures you post on social media on Throwback Thursdays are making a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. Just wait till we get to Scott. But, but no, you know, I think, so that's why I say it's a very personal decision, obviously, it depends on your individual context. But again, for me, I think, you know, spending four years honing software development skills that I've been working on from when I was in, you know, seven years old, years old. Um, that was not the best use of my time. But that's not to say that's true for everybody, I think that, that was true in my particular case. Yeah, I'm sort of the counter experience to that. I got into computers young, I felt that's what I wanted to, do, wanted to do. I went to college to major computer science, took a couple programming classes, and went, this sucks. Um, switched to MIS, took the more business-oriented technology path, and then went on and got MBA in technology, and sort of but it focused in my career and everything based off the fact that in college I discovered what I thought I wanted to do was not it, and here's another way to go at the same root of, like, I love working with technology, but I don't want to be staring at computer coding. So for me, again, just because of the experience, it's very instrumental in the way it guides me into things I do today, and then it pointed me towards what it is. So you would, you would, I would, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. There's a generational thing happening here. So I think I might be the oldest person in the podcast studio, except for Aubrey, the old man, or Uncle here. Um, when I went, I actually went to college as a computer science major, and I had to take three semesters of calculus to be a computer science major. I took my first semester. There's no way I was taking two more semesters of calculus. Had nothing to do with programming, but the the, the thing you so arcane. You don't need three semesters of calculus to be a computer programmer. But back when I was in college, I wasn't thinking of what you went and did. Um, and so I think my college experience would have been very different. The last thing I say though, for me, um, college was so much more about me developing a computer, figuring out where I wanted to be. I think the learning experience was secondary. College experience, at least for me, I think it was really vital in my maturing first. <coughs> yeah, so I would, I would agree. I, I would, if I had to do it again, I would go back to school again. I don't think I knew I wanted to do computers, even though I did have the Commodore 64. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm a basic I'm code. I'm back to Commodore 64. I mean, have 64. <laughs> okay, so we may need to update who's the old man. Um, but but I, I didn't realize that I kind of enjoyed computer science until my sophomore year. I started taking some programming classes and ultimately graduated with a computer science degree. But I would say it was going through that discovery process. It was co opting and learning that, hey, I do actually enjoy this. But then I think I also had a lot of leadership activities that I got to be engaged in at the university campus that I probably wouldn't have if I come through. Yeah, if, for me, and I'll, I'll frame mine differently. I'll, I'll frame this to us folks that might tune in to our podcast as parents of kids, even, right? Who may be at varying stages of their education process. For me, and I apply my experience, I think it was a a bunch of things you said, if, if they're mature enough, right, at that stage, I'm not sure I would push it unless literally they got into like a Stanford, MIT, something that it's like less than 1% of the population gets into. I think it's a different ballgame there. But, you know, in the rest of the university, I, I feel more like as a generalist, educational, it's great, I loved it, but it's more of a maturing stage. I would rather have gone back if I was mature enough and maybe started a business or done some very specific educational things for a year or two that, that pushed me right into it. Now, of course, I wasn't mature enough at that point. But I think if you're, you're a parent out there, of now, no, and I'm not now, but if you're a parent out there and, and you, you, know, you come from a different generation where it's like you're going to college, right? And you might have a kid who was a Chris Clark back in the day who's been coding since he was seven, and this guy's ready to rock and roll. I mean, you know, I guess it's, it's no harm, no foul, because if they're going to do that anyway, they might go to a year of college, do a bottle there, and both. But I, there are other options. I think it's just one common option. I know this happened with Ronan Iron, and I think what happened with the FinTech program or the Wind and the Wind program. One of the things we've done wrong as a society, we've taught parents that college is success, that they're good parents. If their kid goes to college and graduates, that's the definition of parental success versus they're going in the right direction, they're doing something they're passionate about, they have the opportunity to earn capital to be successful. And that's one of the real challenges is, is, is saying that you know, college is not necessarily the de facto success part, and it should be. We have a country. Well, we also got to change statistics, because I think if you look at macro statistics on this, it still comes back. If you have a four level year degree, you're earning potential way out earned college degree. And I think what's happening is that's starting to change with technology, and that's not always true. And some of that is government statistics got to catch up with that, or else that's what a lot of